I'm Dr. Bart Ryan, make a prescription for your transformation, real people, real conversations, and real success. And when you think about it, we all have our own story. And that story is important because it is the very identity of who we are as we relate to the world around us. And the importance of that is really to help people appreciate, you know, your value in a sense for them, for yourself, but also when it comes to your business, what is that identity? What is that brand? And unfortunately what happens is that too many people are just simply not aware of what their true essence is. You know, they do all the traditional kind of marketing and what you think you have to do and, and everything else. And just the fact that their success keeps on eluding them is oftentimes um, thought of, okay, well, maybe the economy isn't right, or maybe the specific strategy is not right. And not often enough do people really start investigating, okay, what is that story? What is that story that's going to inspire others? But stories are not that easy to create, if you will. You need the right person who understands the human experience, who understands how to relate things so that other people can relate to that. Because a great story is not only so relatable, but also creates that emotion within us. And when you think about it, that's exactly what we're all doing. We are selling emotions. We're all selling an experience, not a specific product, but an experience and emotion. So today I'm delighted to be talking to Alicia Green, who is that expert in branding and storytelling, and that's going to help you discover, you know, what is your epic story in life so that you can create that brand that makes a difference and brings you to your own success. So, Alicia, thank you so much for joining me today. <laughs> thank you. It's a pleasure. So, I, I love your background and, and your appreciation of, in a, in a certain way, how people, certain people especially, you know, have that challenge that they don't get their story out, they don't get their message out. And that in particular has inspired you to appreciate the fact that so many people have the same problem, and in particular as it relates to their business. So give us a little bit of a backdrop as to what inspired you to go into this business, and, and again, be the inspiration for others to realize, you know what, you don't have to be in a regular business. You don't have to be like everybody else. You can break the mold so that you can get your own success. Absolutely. Um, I really, I enjoy many qualities of what I do, but mainly I wanted to create my own circumstances. I, I have a very um, unique circumstance of two children that I raise on my own, and um, I, I wanted to have access some kind of control over my financial parameters. I love to travel. Um, we travel pretty extensively. And so having a traditional corporate position would anchor us. So those are a couple of major factors. And then um, I have a son that's on the autism spectrum and um, that was the most recent challenge. And having my own career allowed us to um, seek out and find the right resources to, to get him the accommodations that he needs, which brought us to Santa Cruz. So, um, yeah, that, does that answer your question or do you want me yeah, to? Yeah, no, it, it does. But I think what's also Im important for people to appreciate in your particular case and, and the brilliance that many autistic uh, uh, people have and sometimes the, the absence of certain, say, social skills. And I think uh, it sounded like that also inspired you to help your son get his message out there because he's an amazing artist. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're they're both amazing artists in, in their own respects. And and Adrian, he he sketches and he tinkers all the time. I mean, as far back as I could remember, um, this kid at eight years old, he redesigned an engineer to make it more environmentally efficient. And since then, it's it's been automotive. Uh, what do you call it? Lo locomotives? Um, semi trucks. Now it's American muscle cars. And so um, he was like, well, mom, how can I make my own money and work my own hours? And I said, well, it's going to take a lot of work. It's not easy because every time he goes to bed and wakes up, I'm awake. But um, you can do it. But when we printed his 
his recent drawing out on posters, I told him, look, it's not the paper we printed it on because it's very inexpensive to do that. It's the story that's going to sell those drawings. So you really have to build your story and resonate with people if you're going to get the price that he kind of came up with. So, yeah. And so anybody interested in art, uh, you got to check out uh, Alicia page and, and check out this beautiful picture. It's just amazing. But this is what I found fascinating about our conversation right before the show is how you help people discover what their real story is. Because oftentimes, you know, we're stuck in this, this, you know, routine of thinking the same way simply because of what we learned over time and don't have that ability to make all these connections. And because of your background, I mean, you've traveled in so many countries, but not just uh, like on vacation. You actually lived in different countries for a period of time, which makes a huge difference. And so this vastness of experience, you know, being able to relate to so many different things, worldly things, obviously helps people create their story. Oh, absolutely. Um, I think that one of the things that my clients have appreciated when they've worked with me is um, I'll give you a recent example. Uh, for a short period, I lived in Oregon. And um, I was talking with a, a guy, and he lived there as well. And I mentioned this community. Um, their background is uh, from Russia, but it's old Russian. He's like, how did you know about the Russian farmers? And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I just lived there. And he got so excited. And it totally um, broke that uh, communication barrier. We just we felt comfortable with each other. There's an affinity and an instant affinity. And that's what I look for in every single engagement that I have. I sat down with a bookkeeper and she explained everything that she wanted to accomplish. And I listened. And then I said to her, okay, so what you'd like to do, and, and I reiterated everything that she said and, and I stitched it together, but using a different example that had nothing to do with bookkeeping, but relating it to the types of clients she wanted to work with, which I believe was the risk restaurant industry. And so I said, well, why don't we um, describe it as though we are making a plate or something of that sort? And she's like, oh my gosh, you're the first marketer that gets it. So that's the moment. That's that pivotal moment that I look for every time I sit down and I work with people is that excitement, that, you know, and, and that, that's so true because, I mean, when, when you watch movies and things like that, you know, we're exposed to all, all sorts of different kind of situation experiences, you know, that you have no awareness of in advance. And so when it comes to our own lives, you know, we all need someone like you that has all these different experiences, all these different insights and say, you can connect the dots. And so not only can you help create our own story, right, because... You know, and that's actually the purpose of my platform too. It's it's really understanding what we don't know that we don't know that makes a difference. And you're doing the same thing with people's stories. And and that's that's a beautiful thing. Now you mentioned something else which I thought was absolutely important. And and it's important for people to start appreciating this. And you're telling me earlier on that about ninety percent of people are either unemployed or underemployed. And it's probably only going to get worse. And so you have an interesting way of solving that problem and about talking about skill sets. Yeah, um, I was referring to people on the autism spectrum. So um, we oftentimes hear about people that have made it. Like they, they have some kind of special skill set, some type of, um, there's some type of um, subject matter expert. But we don't hear about the people that they have this specialized skill set, but they don't fit into the corporate culture or they're not socially adept or in some way. It, there's a whole slew of reasons why. I mean, I've met engineers where they're highly skilled and they've been employed for a decade or two, and suddenly they're laid off and then they can't find employment again. And why is that? Um, so we still haven't solved that problem, but my idea is to mitigate that problem at the very least, if, if not eradicate it. And so the way I go about it is through telling their story and finding a way to um, help them fit. Because they're certainly useful. And how do we develop transferable skills? Instead of saying, you are an engineer and that's it, what skill set do you have? And how can it transfer to other areas? And I think that's really what we need to focus on um, with our successors. I mean, not saying it's too late for our generation, but 
what what's going to happen with this next wave of and and the truth is is that yes you know that's uh, along the and, and thank you for that correction on the aut autism spectrum but also relates to the regular spectrum where you know people are just so focused on well you know uh, this is what my parents did or this is what i was told to do or or whatever and it's interesting to find out that so many people you know stick with a certain career or a certain certain job after 20, 30 years, realize, you know what, this is never the job that I ever wanted. You know, let me do something else. Let me actually do something that I'm good at. And I think the truth is, is that uh, a lot of people are probably not in the optimum job that they could be. And so there, again, for anybody listening in, it's to focus on, you know, number one, you know, what are you good at? You know, where is that flow? Where is that talent that you actually have? Perhaps a talent other people told you you didn't have, and truth is you actually do have it if you just tried it out. Okay. But also in that space, what you love to do. And I think, again, that's kind of the work that you do is helping people really clarify, you know, what excites them in life and, and, and give them better references, if you will, so okay. that they can develop this brand, get excited about this brand. Because I know one thing. You know, when you talk to somebody who's really passionate about their work, it's sort of like you get passionate too, and you want to be part of it. Absolutely. I mean, I I love Simon Sinek and Jason Silva. Those are two thought leaders that I'm just like, I, I totally subscribe to so much of what they have to say. And they they focus a lot on, on the why, on the human factor, on, I mean, just a lot of just what you described. And so I think... Um, that absolutely people should really dig deeper and, and understand like, okay, who is the authentic me? Not so much on, okay, how do I differentiate myself? Because it's not about judging or changing yourself, but really identifying with who you already are and highlighting that. And that's my aim. No, that, that's amazing because, you know, when we talk about abundance, yes, many people just focus on, okay, abundance of wealth. But abundance happens much way, much much beyond just the amount of money that you have in your pocket. In fact, it's more relatable to your own abundance and in, in experience and, and fun and happiness and fulfillment and personal growth and those kinds of things. And interesting enough, I once you know categorized you know abundance in, in terms of, of dollars and cents. And uh, I certainly haven't reached that goal that I thought I should have had by now. And I'm much happier and more abundant in my life today because I'm doing exactly what, you, what you're talking about is, you know, focusing on those great skills that I have, uh, enhancing them, if you will. I'm not the best interviewer yet, right? But, you know, it's just going out there, you know, taking that chance and, and doing it and then sticking with what you love to do. And, and I think, you know, that's what life is all about. You know, it's all about having fun and doing what you're good at. And I'm just going to do a plug for um, uh, Steve Linder from Strategic Brain. Um, he's actually doing a uh, master practitioner's training, but he talks about talent dynamics. And it's un helping people understand, you know, where is your flow? You know, where is your maximum potential? Because it's different for everyone. I mean, some people are more creative, some people are more systematic, you know, some people are more gregarious, you know, you know, whatever that is, you know, why not hone in on what's great about you? I love it. I think you're a fantastic interviewer, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm, I'm still learning. So um, one of the things that I think that's, you know, important for people to appreciate is another aspect of what you do. And so not only are you helping people create their story, but we're also very much in a world of, of art and symbolism. And so what I think that's so key, which is very cool, and I understand now what you do, is that you work with graphic artists. I mean, you love art, but you're not that, you know, you don't, you don't claim to be the artist yourself, but you work with graphic artists, and you give them that direction as to how to create an image that helps with the brand. So tell us a little bit how that works. So yeah, and this and I, I do believe that we have great synergy because um, there have been situations where we'll go into a meeting with say engineers um, with an internet of things company 
and they'll say, okay, we want a brochure, we want business cards, we want booklets, and the, the graphic designers will write down everything that they're asking for, and they consider themselves um, the team that produces these assets. Well, I'm that person in the middle that says, hold on a second, why do you want these things? What do you plan to do with your brochure and your booklet and your business card? And they'll pause and say, well, I want to sell my product. And, and, and so I want to go deeper and I want to dig deeper and I want, I want to understand like what we're going to say, how we're going to craft the message, what we're going to portray on these brochures. And a lot of times we'll have someone from marketing on there, but, um, and they'll ask us for suggestions. And I love being a part of that process. And, and that's what branding is. Brand exists, but really extracting that and, and being able to convey that visually and, um, I'm sorry, verbally. Is, is my job. So I'm that catalyst in between the production team and the client saying, okay, like, okay, here are the ideas and this is how we could stitch all of this together. I know what the call to action is and we have the order here, but how can we make this come to life? And, and what I like about your approach, and, and I think this is key and I think, you know, it's, it's much more of the the kind of focus that people are looking for today, and again, that's kind of the background of, of my platform, is it's your own humility, it's your own authenticity, it's your own openness. It's not like, okay, this is just my idea, we're gonna do it this way, this is my big ego. No, it's it's just the, the love and compassion and openness that you have, obviously because of all the you know worldly experiences that you've had, and, and, and like myself, and just seeing how things can be different, and having that, opportunity to relate and I think it's a beautiful thing and and I do want to wrap it up and and give mention to both your kids because I mean okay. you're, you're very fortunate to have both kids and and your daughter is also a very important uh, part of your life and I understand that sometimes they're your teacher so um, okay. tell me about that yeah um, so Ananda she's a ballerina she practices at least five times a week sometimes more and um, She's 12, Adrian's 16. Though they both have a birthday in December. <laughs> I know you uh, enjoy astrology. Well, I probably goes deeper. You were talking about uh, cartography? Well, I do photography, and uh, but I believe in astral cartography as well. That's so, good. Yeah. <laughs> well, so she, um, she was leaving the school the other day and a teacher made a remark to her and she advocated for herself in a very respectful way. And I was so proud because I know at her age, I was um, I was very shy, but sometimes shy people could be reactive as well because we hold a lot of things in and then um, until it becomes too much. And then, you know, we, we sometimes don't react so eloquently. And so uh, this teacher said, well, you need to tell your mom that she needs to schedule your appointments at a different time because this isn't convenient for me. And she said, well, maybe that's something you should take up with my mom. This is the time that worked for us. And this is, you know, I've been called to the office. And so I took it up with uh, administration and, and we're resolving it. But I was so proud of her because she spoke up for herself and she wasn't disrespectful. And we talked about it in the car. And the next day after um, the principal assured me that it was addressed, the teacher called her aside again and it wasn't put to rest. And Ananda handled it so well. I mean, she was just like, no, I know, I'm so glad you're my mom because I know you'll take care of it. And I said, well, how did you receive this message? She said, well, I received it as, I know you're scared of me, but I don't hate you. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and so <laughs> I was like, she's like, but don't worry. I know that she's just trying to intimidate me. And I'm like, wow. So that was just like a nice affirmation because that exuded confidence and she knew the right, she was able to communicate with me. A middle schooler went straight to me. She did all the right things. And so I'm like, wow, there, these microaggressions taught us such a good lesson. And it, and it taught me that, okay, I've, I've equipped her with the right defense mechanisms and she just did the right thing. So that's Ananda. I hope I just illustrated her 
<laughs> you know, it, it's it's a beautiful thing when, and, and I feel the same way as you do, is that when our children can be our teachers as well. And, and so often, and at least in my past, but way past, I mean, many, many years ago, you know, I felt I had to be their teacher. And when I realized the brilliance of them, their their own genuineness, their own authenticity, uh, their own their own originality, if you will. And like you said, uh, and I like what you said is that, you know, they see the world with their own unique lens. And having traveled so much and having seen so many different things, that, which is also my story, is such a beautiful place to be that rather than us sort of um, forming them, you know, they can actually form us to see things differently. And so I really appreciate what you said about that because I think all of us can learn from our own children. We perhaps need to focus less time on controlling them and manipulating them in our own image, but rather letting them explore the world around us and find what they're great at and have let, allow them to do what they love. And being, be a reminder to us, you know, that's exactly what we should do as well. And in fact, that's what I respect about you you decided to create your own life on your own terms. It takes a lot of courage. And now you've got a brilliant business and um, people are looking for you. So how do people do find you? Uh, well, my website is HendrixDrive.com. Um, I get a lot of business from LinkedIn uh, referrals. And uh, I, right now I'm in a process of transition. I'm, I'm thinking that a lot of my clients they appreciate the tactical aspect where I'm doing a lot for them, but I think that there's going to be a lot more value when I bring more online. So I think people could start looking for opportunities to have more accessible packages and they can learn how to do small adjustments to their business by bringing their um, promotions online through some tutorials that I, I want to start offering. That'll come soon. So, um, yeah, I've just been listening to, to feedback and, and uh, I'll still keep doing what I'm doing, but, but I also want to be even more accessible to solopreneurs and um, entrepreneurs, meaning people within organizations that just want to highlight what they're doing and and really just be more accessible to more people. I love it. Well, I really want to thank you for today. And I'm Dr. Bart Rademacher, Prescription for Your Transformation. Real people, real conversations, real success. Bringing to you new voices, new opportunities, new solutions so that you can start dialing into the things that you need in your life particularly when it comes to your own personal story. And I know as much as that experience that I used to have, you know, my challenge was, you know, what is my real story? What is my real identity? And have done extensive amount of work to, to get that dialed in and didn't get all the help that I needed in the beginning. And so anybody who's really interested in being successful, start off with your story, find someone like Alicia Green and, and, and tap into her brilliance so that you can more quickly get to your brand and your success. So I want to thank you for today, and I'm going to leave you with the last word. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure meeting with you online, and I can't wait till you come out this way on the West Coast to visit with us. And It's still right. beautiful in summer. <laughs> All right. It's a done Enjoy deal. Thank you, Alicia. Awesome. Thank you.